Welcome back to Site Tech Inner Mountain Earthworks training videos. In this video, I just wanted to do a quick overview of another product that we have and how the functions work on it in the Earthworks system and what the components are on this one. This is an ATI level best box blade attachment. It doesn't rotate like a grader blade. There's quite a few different combinations of box blades or grader blades out there, and I'm just trying to kind of go over each one of them. If you watch my other video, I did one on the lasers for the ATI level best. But this is a full 3D setup, dual GNSS, and I want to go through all the functionality and the components out here, and then we'll go in the screen and actually run it on a model. So you'll notice right off the bat that one mast is higher than the other. That's because this is also set up to be able to run UTS on the right side. So we've got a dual band radio on here. If you ever see a radio like this that has two antennas on it, that's because one is 900 megahertz and one is 24 gigahertz for running a total station. The other thing you'll notice is if you're ever curious if you're picking up your GPS base station, is this light when the power is on will just be solid if you have power but no corrections. When that light is flashing, that means that it's actually picking up corrections from at least a base on the channel that you've got it set to. Hopefully it's your base. But one receiver is higher than the other because when you run UTS, you want to be able to have the cab out of the way of the total station behind you. So when you put your MT900 on this side, we've got this riser right here to make it a little bit higher. There are different combinations out there where people have put on the electric mask, um, whatever works for you. But this is high enough to where the total station would see it over the cab. When we measure it up, I know what you're wondering is one's higher than the other. Don't worry, when we measure it up, it actually comes out in the wash, if you will. This one is also set up with an SM 941 cell antenna option. So we've got the 941 here and the cell uh, box right here. This has the ability to have an air card put in it and actually work through Works Manager. If you're not familiar with Works Manager, it's the ability to remotely send and receive files to this machine from the office through the air. And we can also monitor the machine and where it's at on job sites. Underneath this box, you can't see it because it's got a cover plate on it, is where the EC520 is. This is a standalone system in a way. This is not hardwired in to the screen inside. So our TD510 in there actually picks up Wi-Fi to this, this EC right here. It's not hardwired. But just so you know, the tablets on all Earthwork systems, even if they're hardwired or not, do not hold the machine files or the designs or any of that. It's actually the onboard computer, the EC, that holds all that stuff versus the old legacy equipment that actually keeps it on the CB460. So this is the basic setup of the machine. Let's go ahead and jump in and load the model up and look what it looks like in there and go through the different functionality. One more thing I was going to show you too is on your, on your lights on the receivers, if you're ever curious about these, is your right side right here, if you've got the solid one on the top, that means you've got permanent power, and the middle one is solid for the corrections, and it's solid because it's the right side, it's not the dominant side. And this light for the satellites will be flashing when you're up above four to six satellites. But there again, coming back to where this light is flashing here, you're gonna notice the same thing from the, the cab here. If you can turn these receivers towards you, I usually do that so I can see them. When that light's flashing in the middle light on the left side, it also is a representation that you're picking up corrections. Your whole system is picking up corrections. The other thing is, is on your ports right here, it doesn't matter which side you put the Cooley cable in on both sides, you've got a dual port. This is also so that you can run combinations. So if we had an L bar here with a sonic tracer, you could have the sonic tracer plugged in at the same time and then set the combination inside. And even though it's dual GNSS, it does have a cross slope sensor. This is the cross slope sensor on the bottom right here, which allows us to be able to run single GPS right or left and actually still get an elevation to the other side, elevation and position based off the cross slope sensor. The other thing that you'll need that for, too, is if you do set up a total station on this and run total station right side, because that's where my riser is, you're only going to be able to get information on the other side off of the cross slope sensor. It'll only work that way. The other thing this allows us to do is if you have a box blade like this and you don't have it set up to a model, you don't have GPS, you don't have any way of running the 3D system, you can still use the screen inside and put this into what we call 2D. 
two dimensional. So you can still run the autos on one side and just tell the box blade that you want it to run a fixed cross slope, which I'll show you now. When you get in the machine, you'll notice that right off the bat, you need to wait for the Wi-Fi symbol right here to actually go solid. Because remember, it's actually Wi-Fi out to the, uh, the EC520. Once that's good to go, you can go ahead and start it just like any other program, either the Earthworks app or the CAT app. So once your Wi-Fi is on, you're good to go. Go ahead and just start your Earthworks or CAT grade app, whatever one you've actually got set up in the machine. Go ahead and log in. And it'll work just like any of your other 3D equipment. Um, if you've got the dozers, the grader excavators, it's, it's all pretty well the same thing, just in a compact option here. There again on your machine setup right here, your icon's going to look a little bit different. You still have all the different capability here. You can run GPS right or GNNS left, GNNS left and right for UTS, and you can also put it in 2D. If you were to put it in 2D, you can see in the combinations right here is what I was talking about for combos. You can run cross slope. You can run just in two dimensional without any 3D corrections or anything. Cross slope and operator or cross slope operator both sides. So you can manually turn on one side as the autos and it will hold that slope for you. So in dual GNNS, it works just like the other ones where you can go ahead and pick any project you've got. You also have the different mode options. You got depth and slope, design and infield. So in this one, we've got our southwest corner for our project here. So once you're actually out on the site, you can go ahead in your project setup here is to pick whatever design you've got. I've got my site tech finished grade colored. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit start on that and apply. When we come to the main screen, boom, we're good to go. So in these machines, I was going to tell you, this is the 510 option. This is the smaller screen. You do have the ability to run a 520 in here if you don't have a 510. It's just going to be, you know, quite a bit wider and a little bit taller. You can run both ones. This one seems like a good size right next to you. And then the option right here, there's quite a few different options that we can do for you for um, the mount for the receiver. There's a star mount that has magnets that can go on this window right here. I chose just the suction cup. We have put the suction cup right here also. It just depends on where the operator wants to see it. Most guys are pretty well paying attention to what's going on in front of them, and they're just using it as a reference, right? So... This is what it really looks like on the screen right here. It's just like all other functionality where here's my 3D model in plan view. If I zoom out, you can see my different colored areas, my parking lots, building pads, ponds, everything from 3D. I've got my VCL file in here that gives me my colored areas right here. So we're sitting in a light duty. So if you zoom in right there, it's asphalt four inches. If you come over here to the, the darker colored, it's asphalt six inches. So we have the ability to run that in plan view and in 3D view. So if you touch and hold and change view, we can go ahead and put that in 3D view and it'll also show the same thing. I've actually got the building kind of popped up just for extra, extra view there for the operator to kind of understand exactly what he's seeing on the screen right there. Now, every machine is a little bit different. I understand that I'm in a newer D3 CAT option. Uh, if you're on Kubota, John Deere, this attachment will work with any of that because the screen is just Wi-Fi to it. So that's not really based on the machine. It's really based on the high flow. If you do run a CAT, for example, there's a couple settings up here on the tabs that you need to know in order to work it. If you have this one right here turned off, this number eight right here, it's gonna kill the power out there to the attachments. So make sure this one is down, this one's off of Rabbit, at least when you wanna run autos. And to do the high flow in these cats is up here at the top, you've gotta to flip this button right here to get the high flow button to start right there. So if you clip that, you're gonna see the high flow starting to flash. All you need to do is hit this roller on the back right here, push and hold up on it and hold it. If you push and hold and roll it up for just a couple seconds, you'll see that go solid and you'll actually hear the hydraulics starting to work now. So in order to go up and down with the cat model, it's your left joystick, you just up with this button and down with this button, simple up and down. In order to pitch it side to side, you've got to hold the pointer finger on the back and then hit these ones. So you push on the back with your pointer and click up or down to pitch it side to side, at least in a manual aspect. So in order to get the autos to work right here for up and down and side to side, it's actually this button on the back, not the pointer like some would think. It's this one at the very top of the two. As soon as you click that, it'll turn it into autos right there and we're good to go. So now we can hold grade and go for it. 
it's a pretty cool system. Um, the reason why I really like showing off the, the ATI box blades or the greater blades, the GBs, the greater blade from the cat, any of the different ones that you have, is you have the ability to bring in your big equipment on the job site if you have that, rough everything in. But when the job site changes, let's say you got to do sidewalks, you got to work in really tight areas, the same exact model that goes in your, your bigger equipment goes in the smaller stuff. And if you have a guy that really knows how to use a machine like this and understand the 3D, he can do a lot of work with this, understanding the, build, the ability to run 3D GPS or to run UTS on the right side. If you work under canopies, if you work up next to buildings where GPS doesn't work very well, et cetera, et cetera. And always remember that you still have the full functionality in here to be able to go to your shovel with the gear job setup. And you can still, with these small machines, do depth and slope, and you can still do infield designs and build that stuff with these and transfer them to other machines if you need to. So hopefully this video helps on the ATI level best with 3D capabilities on it running Earthworks. So thank you for watching this from SiteTech Intermountain.